You know those people who never get a cold or that neighbor who smoked a pack a day but lived to 90? Now, are these people just lucky and have beaten the odds, or is there maybe something more here? Could it be that some people are actually resistant to certain serious diseases, even cancer? And if this is true, can we isolate that resistance and use it to change the face of medicine? Well, my guest today is Dr. Dip Maharaj, and I had the pleasure of interviewing him for my upcoming book. And what he told me blew my mind. How do you do, Dr. Maharaj? So nice to finally meet well, you. Well, Suzanne, uh, very nice to meet you, too, and thank you. Now, here's the exciting thing. You're doing such incredible work um, in your clinic. You told me about something that I had never heard of, that you were doing research with lab rats that were cancer resistant. Well, I, I just want to <clears throat> be clear. The, the, the research work in, in, in rats or in mice were actually, was actually done not by me. It was actually do done by Dr. Zheng Shui at Wake Forest University. What I've done is I translated that clinical, that research from mice into human. It begs the question, who are the people with the lucky karma <laughs> who, who were born cancer resistant and is there a test? Well, if you take a 20-year-old and you look on the whole at the incidence of cancer, it's very, very low. It's, all, it's virtually zero. But if you take a 70-year-old and you look at the incidence of cancer, it's almost, it's a hundred times greater than the 20-year-old. We know two things. Number one is that when we are young, we're, and we are cancer free, we are therefore cancer resistant. And secondly, as we age, our immune system goes down. So that's the reason why, why I'm, we made the point and um, I've made the point that when we're healthy, what we should do is collect some of our stem cells and store them because we are in effect collecting and storing a healthy immune system. Uh, when we treat those patients using their own stem cells, even though we now use it after they've developed the cancer, what we are doing by that process is, is that we are, when we put the stem cells back in, we are turning back on the immune system. And when we turn the immune system back on, it keeps the cancer away. Now, if I can, like, in lay terms, which is what I always try to do, simplify what you just said, correct me if I'm wrong. You have found that there are people who are cancer resistant. Uh, and you take the white blood cells of these cancer-resistant people and you use them on people with cancer and their cancer regresses? Am I, am I right? Uh, the, the answer to that is uh, yes, in our, preliminary, in our preliminary studies that we've seen that. The best information on that is that what Dr. Shui, that he was able to show and definitively state in the animals, he could cure the animals of the cancer. Now, in our work, we are, still, we are still doing the clinical trials, so we cannot make a claim that, in fact, that this is a curative treatment. But our results, our preliminary results, are very encouraging in terms of what we're seeing. You are a stem cell specialist. What's the most yes. important thing that we can do today to prevent the diseases that are most frightening that we're afraid of getting down the line? Well, I, I think that we've really got to find ways to be able to preserve our immune system to keep it as strong as possible. And how do we do that? Well, I think that there are three uh, basic ways that we can do that. Number one is ensure that we are our diets, our healthy diet. The second one is making sure that we are exercising on a regular basis. And then the third one, of course, is a very important factor which many people ignore, and that is the effects of stress, to ensure that we manage and we balance our stress so that we don't overdo it. But you said to me banking our stem cells would be one of the greatest things we could do in terms of bioinsurance for ourselves, right? Yes, that's correct. From the work that I've done as a stem cell transplant physician, uh, treating patients with various disorders of the blood, particularly severe cancers of the blood. Over the years, what we have seen that really, that this procedure, what it is really doing is a way of restoring the immune system for those patients in whom their immune system has broken down. When you're young, you are cancer resistant because you're young, you have optimal h hormones, and if you're eating well, uh, that is the time to bank your stem cells for future use, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. The, the, one of the most important areas which we've touched on is I feel that we can cure cancer 
uh, in patients, and we do cure cancer in patients in whom we have restored the immune system. So if we keep that focus and we stay focused on the issue of what broke down in the first place to allow a patient to develop cancer or an individual to develop cancer, and we re-engineer that process and we repair that process, I think we've got the, the, the we, we will be successful in curing cancer. And that's what my focus is on. You say to people, you got to eat right, and you gotta, you've got to manage your stress, et cetera, and they kind of roll their eyeballs. But if you had a Maserati, uh, you would never put inferior fuel into it. So I think we have to look at our bodies as a Maserati and put the highest quality octane into it that we can if we expect great performance. You couldn't have said it better. <laughs> we, we've, we, we've, when we're born, we're born as Maseratis. What we tend to do is over time, we tend to ignore the maintenance, we tend to ignore the, the warning signs, and we tend to then, when the car breaks down, then we sort of say, well, how can we, be, how can we fix it? But if we had been if we had been maintaining it, uh, we would have a car that looks the same as when it was born, as when it was made. And in the same case, uh, to me, that's the secret of of maintaining a good health and long health extension. Well, I love speaking with you. I uh, think that um, the work you're doing is tremendous, and you're dancing around that word that no one can ever say. And I know you can't say it yet, but we're all looking for the cure. To cancer. If you understand what you've explained uh, to us about um, uh, taking the white blood cells of he healthy people who are cancer resistant and uh, using them to bolster the unhealthy person with cancer, that we might have an opportunity to find that elusive big C, the cure. I hope, I hope you're right. I hope you're on it. You're a wonderful person. You're doing well, incredible you. work. Thank you, Suzanne. Again, a pleasure to speak to you and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Me too. Thank you. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on our next show. Bye-bye. On the next episode of Breaking Through. Uh, these little furred creatures are actually good for your health.